Welcome back to Weigh the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, I'm going to be showing you how to turn your somewhat useless coin return button into an actual button so that we can have it insert coins without having to add another button on here for functionality. And we can also use these for other things that are coming down the road. So stick around, you're not going to want to miss it. Now I really like the look of my authentic Williams coin door and it's real. If I wanted to go get a real coin mechanism, I could hook it up so that I could put a quarter in there and it would accept credits and work. However, this is just gonna sit in my home. I don't actually need that to work. However, I do have this coin return thing that usually just ejects a stuck coin from there, but it could be used as a button. We just have to figure out how to do that. Now I actually have one extra input for my virtual pin controller, so this really works nicely. We can tie two different micro switches in here on the backside and get it to detect those presses and we'll put it in as coin inputs. Now the other cool thing that I'm trying to get set up here for a future video is that I want to start messing with pin vol so I can adjust uh, different table volumes and the exciter volumes and stuff like that and I don't want to have to break out a keyboard all the time. So long term I am going to use this same button press as one of the shift buttons so that I can control that later. Okay looking at the coin door from the back when you push the coin return you can see that there's this big piece of plastic moving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install one of these micro switches in here but there's a problem because if I put it up here and have it just so that it's ready to touch someone only has to lightly push to get it to click. However because of this long travel if somebody pushes really hard we might actually bust this micro switch. So a very elegant solution to this that's off of MJR net is to get a micro switch that has a longer lever arm here and instead of making it normally open where you have to hit this to make contact if you use the other connections here you can make it normally closed and all you got to do is put this lever arm in the back here and how you have it set up is that when this is all the way back and you're not touching the coin return button this will be depressing that which is actually breaking this connection and as soon as you push the return button this will move away from the arm and it will open and make the connection inside the micro switch. So now all we got to do is figure out a little sheet metal bracket that we can put in here uh, without trying to damage too much. Right? If, if you don't really care about this or you got an old one that's not a big deal to mangle you can um, maybe screw into the sides here or you can glue gun it but uh, we've got a screw here that I think if we take this off that holds the lamp and the bulb for the coin return we can get another piece of sheet metal in here and figure out so we can get this micro switch sitting up here uh, like that. Okay because this lamp and bracket are right above where we kind of need it to be there's not a lot of room here so uh, it's about three-eighths of a flat we need so that we have somewhere to screw that back in and then it needs to get kicked out at a 90 degree so that this can get put to the side. So I'm gonna go I think about an inch and three quarters and then about an inch and three quarters up as well. Let's try to go a little bit past here to hopefully make it a little stronger up here. Now instead of just making this with metal and finding out it doesn't work, I'm going to use some thin card stock to be able to try to make a kind of prototype template for this and make sure it works for me and then I will make it out of sheet metal. Now the way I think I'm going to attach this the easiest is if I drill a hole through here and then screw in to this plastic part of the micro switch. So it's going to be on this side and what I'm looking for is that where this is is going to end up right here on the end of this plastic. So you just kind of like fit it in there and if there's any kind of minor adjustments that you need to do it's very quick and easy to do on the cardstock before you start making this out of sheet metal. Okay and with your template screwed roughly in place you can kind of position this and get this to click on the back of the switch there and then all you got to do is hold that position and swing the paper out 
and then get something like a little drill bit or something long that you can poke through just to make some little indents on here for where those holes are going to be. And then just transfer your template onto a piece of sheet metal. I'm using 19 gauge for your own reference there. Okay, and then to cut this up, you're gonna get yourself a nice pair of tin snips or aviation snips will work as well. Take a couple minutes and deburr the edges with a file. You can just barely see the lever of that micro switch in there. And if I'm quiet, you can hear it. There we go, perfect. Then just make another one if you want one for the other coin return as well. All right, so off camera, I made a second bracket for the other coin return button and everything seemed okay. But when I put the micro switch in, it wasn't actually getting triggered. And I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out why. And I thought it was just the placement of where it was when it actually turned out to be something completely different. So let me show you this. The black plastic piece that the micro switch is clicking on is this piece here. And these are exactly the same. And what's actually happening is this one here is actually in a dip or a recess in the metal part of the panel. And so there's way less tension on this, which actually makes it quite loose. So if you take a look on yours, you'll see what I'm talking about. So when you go to do this, what I ended up having to do is try to make the surface here that this plastic piece is on as the same height as the original one that we designed our piece off. So what I ended up doing is taking some uh, half inch flat washers, stacked three or four of them up and then glue gunned it to the door to help make up that surface and that reapplied the tension onto the plastic piece and put it in the same spot and then what do you know the micro switch works. So hopefully this will save you some time and energy when you do this on yours. Now to wire up these micro switches essentially we just need a common ground and that purple wire from our KL25Z wire to come up here and that will be all we need. However we have a nice wire loom here for this coin door so we could maintain that and rather than cut into the wires here to get access to grounds and stuff I took a couple minutes and thought about this there are already two micro switches here to register when a real coin drops in and gives you a credit so if we just tap into those two connections there either by putting a spade on or even just soldering the wires to the connections where these wires are for our coin mechanism then that'll do the same thing and we can maintain and use those two wire connections in the connector for the coin door to make this work. Now to add to this simplified way of wiring this up, we actually also have something set up where if we have real coin mechanisms in here and we use that method, then when we put a coin in, it will register a credit or when we push the button on the coin return, that will register a credit too. So we kind of have a machine set up for free play. Now, if in the wiring from the micro switch down to this micro switch, if you put in a little toggle switch where you can break the connection for these up here, then you actually have a way where you can make it so that you have to put money in through your coin mechanism for this micro switch to register credits and the coin return buttons won't work because that toggle switch is off. And to change that, all you gotta do is open up the coin door and flick a toggle switch. So I'm not gonna set that up, but I'm giving you that idea in case those of you that want to do that and you have coin mechanisms. Now to figure out which connections you want to set up here for this micro switch, you're going to take a multimeter and set it to ohms. And if you have a beep function where if you touch these, they beep, then that's what you want to set it at. And you're looking at connections that don't beep when they're touching, yet when you push your button in, they beep like that. 
So we want these outer connections to get set up. Oh, you hear that? That sounds like a montage to me to get some work done. test with our multimeter. We've got our beep function set up on our multimeter on those connections. So when I press the coin return button, there's our credit. And because we have it wired in parallel here, the other coin return button should work too. And because we've tapped both of these into the micro switch for the real coin mech down here, that should work too. Now, I don't have a coin mech, but if you do, all you got to do is cut the purple wire put in a little on off toggle switch and now you have a switch to open up the coin door and turn on and off free play. Meaning that you break the circuit to these mechs up here so the coin return buttons don't work anymore, but the coin one still will always work. All right, cool, let's close this up and then we can get virtual pin controller opened up and see that the KL25Z is detecting those button presses. And then we can get into VPX and change the coin button to the extra ball button. And then these new micro switches, let's turn those into insert coins. Okay, let's open up virtual pin controller. And let's see which button our coin return is. Okay, it is button 13. Okay, so we're just gonna make a note of that. And just so we don't get mixed up here, our now coin button, which is going to be our extra ball button, is 12. All right, so the virtual pin controller is detecting that. Wiring wise, that's good. So now we just have to go into VPX and tell it what we want those buttons to be. So I'm gonna go to this PC, C drive, V pinball, visual pinball. And then we're gonna just go down to VPX. And it's gonna ask us of a table and we're gonna just say close for now. And then we're gonna go up to preferences and then configure keys, nudge and doff. Okay, and then we're gonna go up to where it says add credit and we're gonna change it from what button 12 used to be to button 13. And they're parallel, so we're not gonna bother adding for the second credit. There's no sense for left and right here. And then extra ball buy-in is going to be our old one, which is now 12. Like that. Okay, and then all we got to do is press OK. Okay, and then we can close this out. Now let's go into our front end and see if this works. I'm just going to mute it so that we don't hear the music and I get in trouble with you two. All right, here we go. Coin return micro switch buttons test. There we go. That's working fine. That's the left side. Here's the right. Perfect. And just to test things, our old coin button, which is now an extra buy-in, does not do anything. Perfect. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm pretty sure Flintstones here uh, has a buy-in, so I'm gonna test that here. There we go. So I get the buy-in button works and uh, Flintstones is a good table to test that out with. Perfect. While you're at it, don't forget to change future pinball so that you change the coin insert buttons there. So we're gonna go to C drive, V pinball, future pinball. Then we're gonna go down to futurepinball.exe, double click on that. Then you're gonna go up to preferences, game keys and controls. And then over here where it says insert coin one, it used to be 12, and we're now gonna change that to button 13. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no extra ball buy-in. I've looked everywhere on here, and I did some research online. I could not find it. If you happen to know what the extra ball buy-in is for the games that have it for future pinball, let me know, and I will add that to the top of the video description later. Okay, when you're done that, just press OK. And close it out and give it a try to make sure it works. Now, since we changed the function of this coin reject button, you may want to go in there and reprint a new label for in here so that it says push for credit or really whatever you want to make uh, instead of saying push to reject. Now, I'm not going to do it because I know what that button's going to do when I push on it. And, and that way for me, it looks original still. But if you are interested in doing that, I will put a link down in the video description down below so that you can find that and print it off and put it in for yourself. Now, if you want to know how to do that, since I'm not going to do that in this video, I have got a great video on how to do a restoration on a coin door. And all the info you need will be in there. All right, that's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to get those useless coin return buttons to actually do something for you. Now, uh, I'm also getting this ready for the very next video, which is going to be installing XPatter. And that's going to allow us to turn one of these buttons into a shifted button that will allow all of the other buttons on the cabinet to have a secondary function. And that's going to be getting us ready for another video where I set you guys up with pinball and how to adjust all the table volumes. So lots of cool stuff coming your way. If you have any questions about the video, put it down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, take it easy.